All right, so let's have a look around Game Dev Assistant and see how it works. So once you install the plugin and you set it up with your token, you should be here on the settings screen, okay? And from here, what we can do is do one of two things. We can go up to the top right corner where we have the settings and the My Conversations buttons. Um, we're on the settings screen at the moment. If we go to My Conversations, this basically shows us all the conversations that we have created so far and in the past. So if you want to refer to things that have happened, you can of course go there or continue on existing conversations. Um, you can create starred conversations or favoriting them by just clicking on the star and that will pop them up here. Or you can unfavorite them by clicking on the star to bring them back. Uh, you can also click on the delete button here to delete a conversation. It'll pop up with a little prompt window. You just click delete. Um, now important to note, this also deletes it from the server, uh, not just on the client side. So that message is now gone for good. So how do we go about actually then creating a new um, conversation? Well, we can go to the top left corner and click on the start new conversation button, this green plus. And this is going to create it here. Now we can then go down, begin typing out our prompt and hit enter. Uh, but a few things I want to go over first and that is using the chat or agent mode. So by default, you can see at the bottom here, we are set to chat mode, which is a generalist assistant um, that can help you in making your games and learning Godot. Whereas if we change it over to agent, this means that it is still gonna teach us how we can create stuff, but it's gonna be more focused on actually doing than explaining, okay? Um, so if you are learning Godot with this tool, then I recommend using chat. Whereas if you want the most straightforward, um, to the point, create this thing, edit this script, write this code, then you can go over to agent. Although chat does both of those features. And also for your prompts, you might want to provide information such as the scripts you're working on or any errors you're getting here in the output. Well, to do that, we can go down to add and we can then choose to add different contexts such as including our open scripts, our output, uh, the Godot documentation, which is already included by default, but adding in the docs context can sort of emphasize it more to explore that. Um, the git difference command and your project settings. Uh, but let's go ahead and ask it to do something right now. And let's start big. Let's say we want to create a solar system with planets that orbit around a sun. I'm going to go create a solar system with uh, three planets that orbit around it. Okay, hit enter. And it is going to go ahead and um, step by step show us how to do that. So first let's create the sun, then for each planet we'll create three, um, and then the script for making the planets orbit. Now, once everything is done, it will also provide some sources for us um, for the Godot documentation. Uh, but if there's anything here you don't understand, you can, of course, just ask the assistant um, to elaborate. For example, how does the sine and cosine um, functions work? It can explain that um, for you very easily. Uh, now, to implement all of this stuff, we can wait for the generating one-click actions to complete, which is essentially going to be a button we can click to implement every single thing here. So if we then scroll down, you'll see we have all of these blue buttons, which basically implement, for example, the script, the node 3Ds, the mesh instances. Um, I'm going to click on the green button to apply all of these. And that is going to go through and do that like so. And there we go. So now we have our, uh, our sun and our three planets. But you may notice that the sun is uh, a bit flat. So let's go ahead and fix that. So here I'm just going to say um, the scale of my sun and planets seem to be squashed. Can you make them spherical? Okay, so hopefully it's gonna go ahead now and fix these small little issues. When that's done, we can click on the apply all for these new actions, and that is going to fix them like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click run, and we should see it in action, and there we go. So we have our sun, and we have our planets orbiting around it. Now the next step is going to, of course, be changing the background color. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask it to change the background color to black, so change the background color to black. There we go. Um, so you can see when we change the scale, it can go ahead and um, iterate upon what it has already done as well. Okay, so if there are any issues with something that might be a bit bugged, um, you can of course just ask it to fix it and it will find a solution.
Likewise, we've changed the background color to black. It's going to go ahead and say to add a world environment node, set up the environment. Um, and as a new user for Godot, this may be a complicated thing to get into with the world environment nodes and all of these resources. Um, so luckily, we can just click one button and have that be implemented like so. Now, if I click play again, you'll see we have that nice black background. We can also add 3D models to our scene. So you'll see here in my file system, I have a car model right here. Now, uh, we don't actually have to specify the exact name or exact file path. I can just say, for example, add the car model to the scene, and it is going to go ahead and know exactly what car model I'm talking about. Now, if you have multiple car models, probably specify the type, but as you can see here, it's going to go ahead and implement it in. I'll click on the action button here, and there we go. We now have our car model in the scene. Now for something a bit more advanced, I might say, for example, um, create a car controller that I can move around with the keyboard. Um, also have a camera that faces behind, follows the car. Okay, now this is going to automatically then utilize the car model that I have in my file system, as well as creating the scripts and all the different nodes, structures, and systems needed for something such as this. I'll click apply all, and that is then going to implement our custom car controller here. So you can see we have a car. Um, if I just go ahead and click run, now you notice we have a car, we have the camera, but it's a bit um, hard to see if we're moving or not. So I'm going to go ahead and ask the AI um, to add in a ground and some obstacles. So I'll say add in a road and some obstacles for us to drive around. All right, so we'll apply these actions. And as you can see, we now have a road system, which if I press run, is going to go ahead and generate a road, which our camera right now is below. So so if I go ahead and perhaps adjust my spring arm a little bit so it's facing up um, and also around so we can actually see the car from behind. Um, just these little adjustments. Move my car up a little bit then and run this. You should see that we are now steering and controlling a car that we can drive around just like this. Um, this was with absolutely zero coding on our part. Um, we have just gone ahead and implemented this right here. And we can also work in 2D. So here inside of my file system, I have a sprites folder which contains all of these sprites. So let's say I want to create a spaceship that I can fly around. Well, I'm going to ask the assistant to create a spaceship controller. And that's all I'm going to specify. Okay, so we're going to see what it does with that, um, just that tiny little prompt. And from that, of course, we could extrapolate. We could say, hey, I want to then add the ability to have thrusters. I want to make the movement a bit smoother. Um, I want it to, to be able to shoot. I want there to be obstacles. I want there to be enemies. We can keep on going with iterating upon what we have created. And once that is done, we will get all of our actions. I'm going to click apply all, and we should then see them working. So. Um, over in my scenes folder, it went ahead and created a spaceship scene. Now, if I drag that in, there we go. Let's press play and see if it works. So I can use the arrow keys to rotate it like this. And when I fly, it is going to move around. But of course, you, um, it's a bit hard to notice, but the spaceship is flying to the right and not forward. That is because in Godot, uh, the default forward direction is pointing to the right. And it doesn't really know, you know, which direction our sprite is facing. So what I'm going to say is uh, if I open up that script, so let's go to my scripts folder, you'll see it created the spaceship controller. We'll open that up. Uh, we could, of course, go through the code ourselves and modify it, or we could go to the assistant. We could add the open scripts context here, so it is um, basically knowing to read our scripts when we submit this message. When moving forward, uh, my ship moves to the right instead of up. Okay, so let's see what it can um, determine from this issue that we are giving it and let's see if it can solve it. So the assistant is actually going to tell us exactly what the issue is. It's basically telling us that um, our ship is moving along its local x-axis, which to the which points to the right by default, but you want it to move forwards up 
Okay, um, so it has the updated script. We can then click edit spaceship and that is gonna edit the script and hopefully solve our issue. So now if I run the game and play it again, you'll see that I fly in the direction that the ship is pointing. Okay, so that is how easy it is to set this up. Now along with this, we could also add in an enemy. So let's just say add in an enemy spaceship. Uh, and in brackets we'll say red, that follows the player, but stops when it gets next to them. Okay, so we'll just create a little basic enemy AI right here, so we can have an enemy ship follow the player and stop when it gets within a certain distance. All right, then we'll click apply all on the change that have been generated, and we'll see if it works. So in my scenes folder, we have an enemy ship scene, and as you can see, it's got that red sprite. Uh, we can go to the inspector, now there is a player path that we have to assign to it, so we'll drag the player in. So let's press play and test it out. And as you can see, we now have this enemy ship chasing after the player um, without even writing a single line of code. Now, we probably also want the enemy to be facing the player, so we can of course go in and set that up. Um, so let's just say, make the enemy look at the player with up being its forward direction, okay? Because remember, we did have that issue with the sprite earlier on um, that with the player not facing in the correct orientation. So let's specify that here as well. And now if we press play, we should see that the enemy is gonna rotate and follow the player as they go along. So from here, you can of course then ask it to create some shooting behaviors. You can ask it to create um, some behaviors that the player can then shoot and then damage the enemy. You can essentially create an entire game using Game Dev Assistant. Now, when it comes to the premium features of Game Dev Assistant, uh, down here in the new conversation window, we have a reasoning uh, uh, toggle here, which basically allows you to access a much more advanced AI model. Um, so if there's more advanced sort of things that you're wanting to do, it may be best to use this different model. Also, if we go to the settings, down at the bottom, you'll notice a custom instructions. This is where we can specify certain things. For example, if you want different coding styles, for example, uh, you might wanna specify that you want more comments explaining what each thing does, or you might want your code written in Spanish, for example, or other conventions such as um, naming variables in snake case, Pascal case. You might want um, to have different tab widths, um, spaces between functions, stuff like that. This is where you can specify exactly how you want the final output to be. So that there was a look at Game Dev Assistant and just the surface of what it can do and how it can assist you in game development with Godot.